What's going on YouTube? You already know who it is back at another video for you guys tonight. So I was requested to check out this video. It's called Top 10 Great Horror Movies with Bad Rotten Tomato Scores. Now, Rotten Tomatoes always kind of confuse me because I mean, it's like Rotten Tomatoes are bad. So I'm confused. Can somebody please explain to me how Rotten Tomatoes work when it comes to scoring movies and all that type of stuff? And for the thumbnail, it has Freddy vs. Jason. Look here. When I was a kid, that movie scared the shit out of me. Like, who can you imagine being stabbed several times with a big ass machete in the bed after you just, you know, handled your business? Like, even though that dude was a straight up asshole, so girl, but whatever. But anyway, listen, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I don't know what y'all talking about. I mean, it was a mixture of horror. With comedy, you know what I'm saying? And with Freddy, I mean, you know his ass is going to be like, I'm eternal, bitch, you know what I'm saying? Come on. Shout out to Robert England. But uh, let's check it out and see what movies are on this list. See if I agree or not. And about a three, two, what the hell is wrong with the mouse? And about a three, two, one. Horror is arguably the most divisive movie genre. Yeah. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're That's counting good. down our picks for the top 10 great horror movies with bad Rotten Tomato scores. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell subscribe to get notified well. about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at horror movies that were Are you critically fucking panned, serious? Pet well Cemetery was good too. Audiences. That movie Note traumatized that the me as a kid. Are y'all crazy? As accurate as of May 2019. It's still running. Stop it, please. For God's sake, please stop it. There's no I ain't gonna lie. This one got kind of threw me off. Oh, oh. Turn it off. Number 10, <laughs> Event Horizon. I never heard of this. That message. He sure believes in hell. Event Horizon is certainly an odd beast. It follows the crew of the Lewis and Clark as they investigate the Event Horizon, a spaceship that has reappeared oh, is that near a big Neptune ass after meteor rock? leaving our universe. Is and that the what they find is not pretty to a say. A big ass least. shark. The movie was a total failure when it was first released. It was Clearly, because I never bomb, heard of it. <laughs> it earned a D plus cinema score, and it currently Damn, has a 21 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's bad. However, the movie has gained quite the devout fan base over the years, who praise it its relentlessly foreboding atmosphere, disturbing imagery, is and yes, Lovecraftian it is. elements. It's not perfect, but it serves as a good representation of the criminally underutilized Ooh. space horror subgenre. This ship knew about it. It knows my fears. It knows my secrets. Number nine, Final Destination. Y'all hate what you that movie. Now? That was that was a good movie. It was crazy. I'm afraid to die. Some people may call Final Destination a classic. After all, it spawned a franchise that spent I mean, four think follow ups so. and over six hundred and sixty-five million dollars in box office takings. Would it surprise you to know that only thirty-four percent of critics gave the movie a positive review? Yep, they really didn't like this one. That said, general I audiences seem to love it. The death scenes are creative and fun. The third one, though, to say, and the exploding that one had me plane sequence up, still with the two comes girls to mind whenever you board an aircraft. Like I couldn't it imagine going out like that, being burnt and crisp. Death, which you can probably see up. in the comment section of every close calls YouTube video. It's still relevant and still very much enjoyed. In death, there in are no accidents. Candyman no was in here. I think his name was Tony Todd. No I didn't want to say the wrong name. No escapes. <laughs> Number eight, Scream Four. It's true. Y'all got all the movies that I mean I liked. I thought they was pretty decent. Especially this one for like a fourth one in. Scream 4. Oh. Not only did it have to justify itself oh. after the fitting conclusion to Scream 3, it also had to bridge an 11 year gap between crazy. movies and prove that the slasher genre was still relevant. Unfortunately, it didn't do enough for critics. 59. Only 59% of whom gave the movie a passing score. They didn't call the movie terrible, but they did criticize its predictability and general pointlessness. Despite they do the have them type reviews, of movies, I ain't gonna it lie. It helped reinvigorate interest in the series, and many people argue that it's the second best movie of the franchise. It doesn't reach the heights of the first Scream, but now, it's obviously. still a fun and scary way to pass 90 odd minutes. I don't. You can't save them. All you can do She whooped his ass though. Number seven. Pet Cemetery. Man, whatever. This movie scared the sh This movie traumatized me. Stephen King is one of the all-time horror masters, but his film adaptations carry a spotty record. Unfortunately, Pet Cemetery oh, is not on the same pedestal as and Carrie. That, and Carrie. Despite the source novel being one of King's best and scariest, the movie holds a divisive 50% 50, rating on Rotten 50, Tomatoes 50. and is often criticized for its bland acting and cheap, uninspired production. That well, I mean, it said, was back in the day, you know. Some aspects certainly shine. 
It thankfully retains the dark and unforgiving some atmosphere people got of the it, novel. Some people don't. Fred Gwynn is fantastic as Judd, and that Zelda scene still gives us nightmares. Yes, Seriously, I hate it. Seriously, it messed us up good. Never get out of bed again. Never get out of bed again. It's not a I hate it the way she walks into that camera like that. Oh my god. One of the scariest books ever written. Got that little boy in a dress. <sighs> oh, Gage. Gage. Hell is wrong. I you something, mommy. Number six, House of a Thousand Corpses. The yeah, I never seen this one. I heard of it, but I never House seen it. House of a Thousand Corpses was Rob Zombie's directorial debut, and it was absolutely crapped on. It holds a hideous 19% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. 19? Many critics calling it little <laughs> more bad. than a derivative and trashy But then other parts say 65% like it, so I'm it confused. Paid homage yeah, somebody let me know how this Rotten Tomatoes wasn't shit works. smart enough to Ew. elevate from the schlock. Regardless, the movie was a hit with Gorehounds, and it spawned a sequel and an attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood. It still has a following, much the same way schlocky B-movies from the 70s have theirs. But despite the appreciation, Rob what Zombie the has hell? dismissed the movie, calling Ooh. it, quote, a calamitous mess. No, no, I, I'm really I'm very interested. I'm, I'm not well, trying to- Rob Zombie home. says that, and you know it's bad. Gotcha. <laughs> you are such a bad guy. <laughs> Number five, the Amityville Horror. Ew. Yeah, mostly everyone agrees that George and Kathy Lutz were full of it, but that doesn't make the story less entertaining. Despite the hoopla surrounding the story at the time, the That's Amityville the Annabelle Horror doll, was the met with one. derision oh, by many Annabelle critics, doll. and it currently holds a 27% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It certainly is a little hokey and bland by today's standards, especially when you compare it to more modern and more expensive movies like The Conjuring. But it's still an effective haunted lit. house movie, and I can't wait it helps the set the bar for later films of its kind, especially the whole Indian burial ground trope. At any rate, it's way better than the crappy Ryan Reynolds remake. I'm sorry, Yo, what? they was trashing Number four, him in this Halloween movie. 3, Season of the Witch. Enjoy yeah, that would confuse the hell out of me, because Michael Myers wasn't even in this one. I'm like, where the fuck is Mike? Halloween 3 is now then the little boy as a died, had fucking horror some type of roaches or some ugly ass, stank ass, score. stank bugs. Whenever the topic of underrated or Ew, underappreciated oh horror movies comes up, someone always I mentions the that gloriously part. macabre and nihilistic Halloween 3. But to understand the no, movie's poor reputation, me you need to mentally travel back to 1982. A cheap movie called Halloween effectively changed the horror landscape, and it its was cheap, sequels but it was set good. the bar for bloodier, gorier sequels. Ooh, the oh, slasher definitely. genre had been invented, and Michael Myers was its founder. And then Halloween 3 came along, said, nah, forget that crap, and pushed Michael aside for an anti-capitalist story about they witchcraft. Everyone wanted more Michael Myers, not androids and oh. pumpkin masks imbued with magical fragments of Stonehenge. Halloween morning. A very busy day for me. Number three, Freddy vs. Jason. Make them remember what they- my children for far too long. While Halloween spawned the slasher subgenre, movies like Friday the 13th and A Nightmare Ugh. on Elm Street helped solidify they its make place look in so the mainstream. Gross and nasty Freddy vs. Jason answered 20 years worth of fan demand by pitting the two horror icons against each other. Look, and I the thought the shit was good. Y'all crazy. Bloody and outrageous as we all expected. Welcome to my nightmare. Of course, only 41% of critics liked the movie, but then that again, it's not exactly surprising. It's not like these franchises were critical, darlings, but Freddy vs. Jason gave fans exactly what they wanted. Lots of blood and gore, drugs, mm -hmm. sex, and a killer showdown between two of cinema's greatest killers. Yep, I what thought it was good. What you want? <laughs> right, what did y'all really expect? Bad dog to sleep. Oh shit. Fuck God! Number two, Saw. You don't know me, What? Saw? That was a lot of us childhood. Is it wrong of us to say that Saw revolutionized like, the horror genre? Fucked it up shit. One of the I don't even know how to put it in words. Of the decade, introduced torture porn to the mainstream, if you think I was and helped popularize low-budget independent horror. Back how, how old I was in 2004 and, and watched this shit, you got... Sequel. Especially with but that motherfucker! But the Saw is a classic. If Man, only please. the critics saw it that way. Just 49% of critics gave the movie a positive review, with many calling it too sick and twisted for its own good. Some That's the point of the a horror boring movie. detective story, cheap effects, and questionable acting. Looking mostly at you, Lee Winnell, they saw it as amateur filmmakers indulging their own sick imaginations, and nothing more. Oh! Help! Help! I didn't think the acting was questionable in this movie. Help! Before we unveil our number one pick, honorable here mentions. are some honorable mentions. The fuck is that? Was that a big ass beetle? The relic. Oh, 
I can tell you. I ain't you. never heard of that. But then I'm gonna have to kill Wolf you. Creek never heard of that either. I've seen <laughs> him on some. <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know this was an original movie. But they remade this back a couple of years ago. <laughs> the way she screamed though. I thought that one was good. The one I saw. That was a good movie. What is y'all talking about? Look, that was a good movie. Y'all hate me. The Strangers. What? The Strangers is a tense and tight I'm totally horror movie tripped that out. Y'all got all the movies humanity. that I like on here. While ghosts and elaborate trap making serial killers me? are fun, they take place outside nah, of our nah, everyday nah. existence. The Strangers is a realistic movie about two everyday people being tormented for no reason whatsoever. How could that not fuck you up by in real events, like, including the Manson murders? It was like the purge an before its time. Degree of credibility. The movie reminds us that darkness and depravity do exist. Sometimes mm. literally in yeah. our own backyards. But critics hated its adherence to cliches and the one-dimensional characters, and it currently sits at just 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. That is far too low for what Never some satisfied. perceive as a modern-day classic. Why are you doing this to us? Because you're a home. At first, I thought she said because you're a hoe, but I think she said because you're at home. <laughs> Listen, I'm a bit on the defense because most of these movies, like, I like them. I thought they were pretty scary, especially coming up. Because when most of these movies were out, I was like 9, 10, 11, like, in that range. Like, I was still obviously a kid. Like, especially with Saw. And, like, I never, I was lucky to not have experience to see Saw when I was a kid, like, I started, like, binge-watching Saw movies, like, last Halloween. Uh, I might I might do it again this year because I didn't watch all of them. I stopped at, like, three, I think. But, like, the first one, I didn't find the acting questionable. And I didn't think the effects and stuff, I thought they were pretty fucked up and gory and bloody and disgusting. Especially after the next two. It's like, what more do you want? Like, you people have to understand Movies like Pet Cemetery in 80s, 70s, hell, even 60s in lower year, century, whatever type of movies, they didn't have the shit that we have now when it comes to horror movies, like the the effects and the graphics and the cinematography and the CGI, if you will. I mean, come on. Like, just like prime example with Chucky, there is no way in hell that you could have expected from 1980 something Chucky to 2019 Chucky to be similar and because it wasn't like Chucky was a whole damn android Chucky was a whole robot out here in the new child's play like so I don't understand what's going on I'm glad they didn't put this shit in here because I would have been definitely uh I would have definitely had a problem with it because child's play especially the first one I was like I'm gonna have to stay up tonight because this shit got me all the way fucked up tonight like seriously and let me tell you something, Pet Cemetery, that shit scared the hell out of me. Especially that one part when she was like, <laughs> that shit was scary to me. Like I was watching that with my cousin. We were both around the same age. You know, he's two years younger than me. He was just as creeped out as I was. Eventually we started laughing because it sounded funny. But still like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? And then Texas Chainsaw Massacre, let me tell you something. Um, the one that came out. I don't know if it was that one or the one in 2006. Did they make two massacres? Like, I, I'm confused. Because that one didn't look like that one. Because the other one, it was with the, the couple, the four, the two couples and shit. The two brothers and then they girls. And they went, they uh, got chased by some heifer on a motorcycle. And they got taken to his house. And everybody just get started getting bodied after, after ever since. It was just crazy. But, I mean, seriously, that shit scared the hell out of me. And when I was younger, I had a crush on the blind boy. And when he got killed, I felt mad. Because I'm like, why did y'all do that to that beautiful young man? You know, just just like put the chainsaw through his body. Just eh, lifted him up and bow. You know, I'm like, how y'all going to do that? But 
And also, let me tell y'all something. Final Destination, I think that was one hell of a, like, creative, um, different type of thing with movies. Like, you know, you do, you doing certain things that, like, something that's supposed to be fun or whatever. Like, prime example, at with Final Destination 3, these kids at a damn carnival. Then shit goes wrong. And then certain, like, subliminals and shit from pictures taken or whatever, that is possibly how they gonna die. And it's like... How could that not creep you the fuck out? Like, seriously, you see a picture, say, for instance, you taking a picture behind, like, a, a fake sword at a carnival. Then all of a sudden, you die like that. You get stabbed in the head or some shit by a big-ass sword or something sharp and pointy that, that's going to fucking fuck your brains up and you be fucking dead. Just, seriously, just sitting there like, like, seriously, I don't understand, like, what y'all talking about. Final Destination had me fucked the fuck up, especially the first one on that plane, because it's like, this is why I'm still a tad bit skeptical of planes, because it's just like, you in the air, you can't really do nothing. You know what I'm saying? You can't open your damn seat up and get the fuck out and, you know, walk on the street or walk on the curb or something. No, you in the fucking air, and you got to just sit there and wait till the motherfucker land. Hopefully, it ain't no damn water, and hopefully, when it lands, it don't fucking blow the fuck up like a damn bomb. Like, I'm just saying, but we'll see. I did enough talking. Listen, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please don't be a stranger to hit that like button, okay? Don't just watch and don't hit the like button now. Come on now, y'all. I need y'all to do y'all part two, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So please hit the like button. Comment below if you agree with this list. Or if you didn't, please let me know some of these movies on this video compilation, if I should say. If any of these movies scared the hell out of you when you were a kid. If you seen, I know most of y'all, especially if you were in the, you grew up in the 90s. Well, you were born in the 90s, but like you grew up in the 2000s if you catch my drift. You know, let, let me know some of these movies that creeped you the hell out. I know one, at least one or two of them did. So let me know. And um, if there's some other videos I can react to for you guys, please let me know in the comment section as well. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram. Hit that notification bell so you guys can know when I have a video up and loaded. See y'all later. Taylor Rain, I'm out this thing.